Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Bolander. I'm a transportation planner with the Northern Middlesex Council of Governments. And today we'd like to welcome you to our Envision 2050 Clean and Sustainable Transportation Options. This is our environmental consulting meeting hosted by the Northern Middlesex Council of Governments. Today, I'm joined with my colleagues, Daniela Garcia Moreno. She is our sustainability planner on staff. I'm also joined by Shravanti Gopalanaran. She's our transportation planner on staff. Shravanti, can you share the slides? And as an overview of the meeting today, the purpose of today's meeting is an environmental consult consultation for our Envision 2050 Long Range Regional Transportation Plan. The requirement of this plan is that we review and discuss potential mitigation and activities to restore and maintain the environmental functions affected by transportation planning throughout our region. Specifically, the efforts and recommendations that are included in the development of our new Envision 2050 Long Range Regional Transportation Plan. We have presentations today from Shravanti and also Daniela, and at the end, there'll be an opportunity for questions and discussion. Thank you for joining. And um, Shravanti, can you just Go over to the next slide. I'd like to start off by providing an overview of our agency. We are the Northern Middlesex Council of Governments. We are one of 13 regional planning agencies throughout the state of Massachusetts. We are governed by an 18 member policy board comprised of appointed and elected officials from all nine of our communities. The goal of our agency is really to increase capacity and coordination across our region. The NEMCOG transportation team serves as a staff to the Northern Middlesex Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is a seven member policy board. They are elected and tasked with carrying out the transportation planning process for our region. And I'll pass it over to Shravanti. Thanks. Thank you, Jessica. Hi, everyone. This is Shravanti Gopala Narayanan, transportation planner at NEMCOG, as Jessica mentioned earlier. So in today's meeting, we will go over the vision and goals of our long range transportation plan, um, Envision 2050, and also the timeline of the project, national planning factors, preliminary recommendations of RTP, mitigation activities and environmental resources. At the end of the presentation, we'll have time for questions and discussion. Envision 2050 is our comprehensive vision for the future of transportation in Northern, uh, in NEMCOG region. And by projecting and planning for anticipated growth over a period of 30 years, this plan will establish a foundation for cost-effective, energy-efficient, and equitable transportation options for all users. Various topics of the plan include economic vitality, safety, infrastructure, environmental and climate resiliency, accessibility, mobility options, connectivity, and equity. So we kick-started the project in November 2022, and the phase one included a survey to learn about the transportation priorities of people who live, work, and play in the region. And the survey was open from November 2022 to February 2023. Um, in December 2022 and January 2023, we met with all nine communities in our region, our regional stakeholders and partners, and we also conducted two mode-based focus groups. And we are currently in phase two, that is February to May. During this time, we hosted the second regional event, Public Forum 2, and today we are hosting the environmental consultation meeting and staff have been working on developing the draft RTP throughout this time. In June, uh, which is phase three, we will present the draft plan to the MPO to release it for a 21 day public comment period. And in July, we will present the public comments received and final plan to the MPO to endorse. I would like to give a brief overview of the US DOTS equity action plan and how that relates to our planning efforts. In 2022, US JOT published their equity action plan, outlining the agency's commitment to pursuing a comprehensive approach to advancing equity for all. And four equity focused areas were identified to guide the equity and uh, advancement activities, such as wealth creation, power of community, 
interventions and expanding access. And these were designed to place people and communities at the center of the equity efforts. These focus areas are used to develop concrete actions that will thoughtfully redress historic inequalities, positively impact historically underserved or overburdened communities in meaningful ways, and ensure that the department is equipped to equitably deliver its resources and benefits. The plan outlines actions to expand access and opportunity to all communities while focusing on underserved, overburdened, and disadvantaged communities. We ensure that equity is an important part of the development process, and we consider how projects impact marginalized and disadvantaged populations. So in this slide, there are 10 national planning factors outlined by Fixing America's Surface Transportation Act, that is commonly known as FAST Act, which is now Biden infrastructure law, uh, which continues several provisions outlined in the FAST Act. I would like to highlight number five, which is to protect and enhance the environment, promote an energy conservation, improve the quality of life and pro promote consistency between the transportation improvements and state and local plan growth and economic development patterns. In developing the RTP, we considered how the regional goals address the national planning factors. So based on the strategies that we discussed so far, we have come up with a list of a preliminary list of, uh, list of recommendations for the plan. So the recommendations are of three types, federal fiscal year 24 to 28, uh, highway recommendations for target and non-target projects, and federal fiscal year 2029 to 2033, RTP highway recommendations. So this table that you're looking at has the list of projects that are programmed in federal fiscal year 2024 to 2028 RTP. And we evaluated each of these projects based on a set of criteria to determine their greenhouse gas emissions and quantified projects that improved greenhouse gas emissions. To give you an example of such a project, the first project listed here, rehabilitation of Boston Road in Westford, was eligible for CMAC funding, that is congestion mitigation air quality funding due to the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. And we requested CMAC funding for that project. The proposed improvements of this project include the design development of complete streets and rehabilitation improvements along Boston Road from Main Street to I-495 southbound. Um, the proposed improvements include correcting ex, uh, existing geometric deficiencies and providing a sidewalk on one side and a new on-road bike lane in each direction. So this project shows reduction in emissions from sidewalks and crosswalks proposed, and this project is hence programmed for 2024 in RTP. Some other eligible projects for CMAC funding are reconstruction and related work on VHW Highway in Lowell and intersection improvements at Boston Road, Lexington Road, and Glad Valley Road in Bilrica. All other projects either had qualitative decrease in emissions or no assumed impact or negligible impact on emissions. This slide has a list of projects that are non-target projects. That is, these projects are federally funded projects of MassDOT, Massachusetts Department of Transportation. Um, so Yankee Doodle Bike Path construction, it is an example, uh, that is an example for a project that is eligible for CMAC funding due to reduction in emissions. The other projects are, again, qualitative. This slide has a preliminary list of projects that will potentially be programmed between 2029 to 2033. And we will conduct greenhouse gas impact and emissions analysis in the future to determine their impact on the communities. I will now pass it on to Daniela. Great. Thank you, Shravanti. Um, so Shravanti gave us a 
great overview of the RTP and I'll speak more on the mitigation activities that we've undertaken in our agency to ensure that we're meeting that federal planning factor of protecting and enhancing the natural environment, um, promoting energy conservation, improving quality of life and ensuring consistency between transportation improvements and state and local planned growth and economic development patterns. Go to the next slide, please. So the first effort that we've undertaken and has been a longstanding effort within our agency is hosting um, and organizing the Northern Middlesex Stormwater Collaborative. So this collaborative is made up of members of our community and additional uh, non-NEMCOG community, mem community members that make up the Northern Middlesex Stormwater Collaborative. And the goals of this collaborative are to undertake public education, procurement management, and administrative tasks that are necessary for a successful management of stormwater. Um, this is all done in a collaborative effort to reduce the cost for local government and taxpayers and to also promote regional coordination and cooperation, um, as well as supporting communities and complying with the MS4 permit. And that's the municipal separate stormwater system permit. Um, so past meetings and work around this, uh, this collaborative have included annual good housekeeping training for the collaborative members, which ensures compliance with the MS4 permit. Um, as well as special topic meetings um, for education across a variety of topics, including how to conduct effective community outreach for stormwater management, how to plan for and implement green infrastructure in stormwater, and um, as well as how to manage poly and perfluoroalkyl alkyl substances in stormwater, which is a topic that is very relevant in, our, in, in this legislative climate. Um, we've also been engaged with Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, as well as the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, to learn about stormwater regulation updates and compliance mechanisms, and this is all also through the statewide uh, stormwater collaborative. Um, and you'll see here we have an upcoming stormwater um, meeting focused on PFAS, and this is in collaboration with our sibling agency, the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, um, that is on May 24th, 2023, um, in person at 1 p.m. And this will be an opportunity for collaborative members to learn about the link between stormwater management and um, these emergent pollutants, PFAS, and become empowered to take action through the various legislative efforts that are rising. Next slide, please. Um, in, or, in order to really promote the energy conservation um, piece of the federal planning factors, um, we've really been able to achieve this through the Green Communities um, program, as well as net zero planning. So to give you some background, the Green Communities program is a designation for communities, as well as a grant program that provides funding to achieve a variety of projects within the realm of energy conservation um, and net zero planning. Um, so this is an initiative of the Green Communities Division of the Department of Energy Resources in the state. And in 2019, NEMCOG received um, funding from the Department of Energy Resources under the Regional Energy Planning Assistance Grant uh, to provide technical assistance to advance greenhouse gas reduction efforts within our member communities. Um, so through that grant, we have been assisting um, communities either with complying with the Green Communities Program and ensuring that they're submitting annual reports and making progress toward their energy reduction goals um, and have also been providing technical assistance in either the implementation of climate action goals and climate action plans or the creation and development of net zero action plans. Um, past meetings and work have included, like I mentioned, the annual reporting requirements We've also hosted a regional clean energy workshop series as an effort to promote um, community coordination and collaboration across the region. Um, this has included opportunities for our communities to learn about energy savings programs that are available through Mass Save um, and other, other state level agencies, um, as well as net zero planning and learning about what the process of net zero planning looks like um, and our upcoming regional clean energy workshop, which will be a sustainability panel and community conversation for our communities to gather and learn about the different efforts that um, various communities have undertaken 
and share best practices in trying to implement net zero plans within their communities. So registration is open for this event and um, it'll be a hybrid event hosted both on Zoom and at the NIMCOG offices. So we would welcome you all to join for that and learn more. Next slide, please. Um, in an effort to um, promote consistency between these transportation improvements and state and local uh, planned growth and economic development, we also conducted a wastewater infrastructure study. Um, the purpose of the study was really to capture a snapshot of current wastewater infrastructure systems. And this included looking at the capacity and the service area and learning what communities were serviced by what wastewater treatment plants. Um, this was also meant to provide a basis uh, for discussion on regional goals and outlook um, to for communities to discuss how they might um, might support additional growth um, in the, the development of um, additional housing units and where wastewater from those housing units would be conveyed. Um, the hope with this uh, study is to learn where there might be gaps in supporting our region with wastewater treatment and be able to address those proactively through um, either applying for funding or identifying funding and address addressing potential infrastructure barriers, uh, maintenance barriers, or conducting additional studies to really find the points of uh, the areas for improvement and be able to address those um, as a region. Next slide, please. Um, as a part of the regional transportation plan, we are also writing an environmental resources overview um, chapter. So as a part of this chapter, um, we'll cover the environmental, environmentally regulated areas. Um, so as you see in this map, there are a variety of environmentally regulated areas in the region. So that includes um, certified vernal pools, uh, regional protected areas, as well as um, areas with uh, endangered species. Um, and so a really key part of being able to promote, um, protect and enhance the environment is knowing where the areas that need to be protected are. So that is the, the aim with this, this part of the chapter. Next slide, please. In addition to protecting the environment, the natural environment, we are also hoping to protect national and local historical resources. Our region is one that was formed on you know, the historic development of mills and um, there's various beautiful architecture throughout the region. And we're really hoping that the transportation projects don't have a negative impact on these resources that form the character of our communities. Um, so again, by the same light, we are hoping to identify where these are so that we can plan mitigation activities um, around them appropriately. Next slide. Um, and in the face of climate change, it is also critical to plan ahead for uh, climate resiliency. So in this map, you see the overlap between the FEMA 1% annual chance flood zones in yellow and bridges and major roads in our region. Um, the bridges are in blue and uh, the rail lines you can see. Um, this will all be much more, much more clear to see in the chapter. So we encourage you to read that, but um, this allows us to understand where critical transportation infrastructure crosses or might be vulnerable to flooding and allows for um, proactive planning so that this doesn't impact commutes or um, or is impacting the infrastructure in a way that is that is negative and requiring more investment in these resources. So we're really hoping to have a very holistic view of both adaptation and mitigation strategies in terms of environmental resources. Um, and this will all be reflected in the final RTP. Next slide. Um, so I've given you a brief overview of the mitigation strategies that we've undertaken. And these all of your all of our mitigation strategies are very public facing. And our current engagement is involves meeting with existing groups and educational uh, meetings as well as encouraging collaboration between our communities. Um, it is of course flexible to meet the needs of our communities while capturing state and federal developments. And we are always hoping to expand these groups to include additional stakeholders. So we welcome your participation and your feedback as well. Um, now we'll open it up for questions um, and happy to 
to answer any questions you might have, as well as um, encourage a discussion. Thank you. Do we have any? Oh, looks like we have a hand raised from Marlies. And Shavanti, can you take down the slides just so we can see everyone? Oh, sure. Thanks. Yeah, I just had to uh, unmute myself and start the video. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Marlies Henderson from Bilrica. Um, I appreciate the fact that infrastructure should not just have a negative impact. Um, and you talked about historic resources and natural resources. And I wonder how about having, a, you know, following the historic resources, not just making sure they don't get impacted, following them. The canals should be followed, should be used for trails, for walking and biking. So not just talking about, oh, let's not impact them. Let's impact them because they will impact the clean transportation. That was one thing. And the other thing was um, vernal pools. I noticed uh, a lot of pink dots near Lowell and um, I wonder how how do I add the pink dots in Berica? I know where the vernal pools are. They're not certified. How do I do that? How do I get it done? Thank you so much for, for your comments. Um, to address, I think, the first comment, um, we are definitely uh, undertaking other efforts within the agency to ensure that these historic mills are not, or historic mills and resources, other both national and local resources are not just protected from impact, but also used. Um, I believe there's additional tourism and um, tourism efforts to, to encourage kind of visitation. And um, there's additional planning efforts that extend beyond the scope of this regional transportation plan to, like you said, impact these resources in, in a positive way because they definitely add to the character of our region. And we want to ensure that they're both preserved and um, used in a way that is responsible and, and reflective of the, of the value that we have for them. Thank you. So thank you for that. And in terms of, I guess I would ask a clarifying question. Do you mean you wish to certify the vernal pools that you're aware of within your community? Yeah, is that just something that I have to go online and, and load up all the paperwork and um, give them all my proof? And it's, it's, an, it's a local resident task or is it the local CONSCOM or is it NIMCOG? Not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I believe I'm not too familiar with the process of certifying vernal pools. Okay. But I would be happy to look more into that and um, relay information as we find out more. Um, I do believe that the Conservation Commission would be the the body responsible for uh, both identifying and um, perhaps submitting the paperwork for uh, getting these vernal pools certified. Um, I also want to point out that I think the map may have been a little difficult to see. So there are a lot, like you said, the, those little tiny pink dots. Um, and I would be happy to share the map so in a higher resolution so that you can verify what certified vernal pools are um, within Bilrica. Because there, there are oh, definitely... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm familiar with the GIS and that there are potential vernal pools and certified and just not too many certified. Um, and then there are even pools that are not even seen as potential. So I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. I guess I just have to make time for that. Yeah, thank you. Marlies, I, just, I just added a link in the chat and um, basically there's a phone number at the bottom of that MassDOT page and it has, um, yeah a direct line where you can contact someone if you have questions about specific data layers and possibly about adding something yeah. that you might know about. So thank I'm you. I'm aware of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Shabbat. Uh, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. I think we have a question from Paula. Can you hear me okay? I'm in the right place. I just want to let you know, I used to work as, um, I did rare and endangered species work, so I've certified many vernal pools. 
but we've also become had um, a community effort where we had an Eagle Scout get involved and the uh, Mass Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program has all kinds of information about it. Uh, spring is a great time to do it because you get your egg masses, you get the sound of the calls from different amphibians. I mean, um, it's getting a little later in the season, a little more difficult for most species, but there, there is information online. Uh, the commission doesn't actually do the um, certifications, but a lot of commissions would help. But it's an, it, they're definitely a, you know, a resource. I mean, I'm on the Conservation Commission, I'm on the board of Neshoba Conservation Trust. So we have a whole bunch of people that I know, I've worked across the state, I've certified vernal pools in Bill Ricker and most of the um, communities in the Commonwealth. So I've done quite a few of them when I worked as a consultant, um, but um, it's, it's, it's fun, but it's also a great thing for an Eagle Scout project. Once you learn how to do it, you get Eagle Scouts out there, they get the troops out there, um, but there's a lot of, there is a lot of documentation and there's, there is a, a process and the information is turned into the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. But um, yeah, take advantage. It's a great, you know, great place to go out and have fun and see what's out there in the pools. I know. Thank you, Paul. That's great. Um, and I also want to point out that Jane Calvin shared a link to um, the details on vernal pool certification. So thank you, Jane, as well. Um, it seems like we have a really informed crowd. So it's great to see all, the, all these resources coming together. Thank you. So Jessica, we have a question in the chat. Um, I'm happy to read it and answer it. Um, so George says, I'm Lowell based. Can you expand on plans for the VFW highway in terms of walkability, bike lanes, et cetera? So to answer that question, uh, VFW highway is one of the projects that has CMAC funding, which means it has uh, results of greenhouse gas reductions. And in terms of the proposed improvements, um, there is a proposal to um, restore sidewalks and to resurface the road uh, roadway, um, reconstructing wheelchair ramps, but um, uh, also restoring the roadway pavement markings. But right now, I don't see any um, proposal for uh, adding bike lanes, but there's definitely a lot of potential to improve walkability around that region. And also in terms of other infrastructure elements, such as just like how I mentioned, the wheelchair ramps are being reconstructed. And there's also the signal um, devices are a little, uh, need, they need some improvements. So those are potentially being restored and replaced. Um, so I hope that answers your question, George. So the second question that you have is, is there consideration of the MBTA zoning multifamily mandates in a five minute radius of the Gallagher terminal? Is there any connection to what you're doing? I'm not sure about that question. Jessica or Janela, do you guys know if there's anything there you wanna add? I'm sure we can get back to you on um, if there's any projects happening, but I know our agency is working actively on a housing strategy plan that would include the entire region. So um, our housing team is working closely on the multifamily zoning in regards with the MBTA communities, which would include the perimeter around the Gallagher terminal. Hi, Thank you, Jessica. And I think I missed one of the other questions that George had, uh, which is about Potticket Street. So Potticat Street is actually programmed for 2029, which means it is in a very preliminary stage of planning. So we do not have any proposed improvements at this point, but if you want more information um, on specifics, uh, you can reach out to City of Lowell and see if they have any updates on the project. Okay. Yeah, I have a, a follow up um, on the Pawtucket Boulevard. Um, so yeah. is there any, any attention to uh, green space along that, uh, along the boulevard? Um, so as I mentioned earlier, it is in a very initial stage of uh, planning. So the project is listed in 2029 to 2033 recommendations because the city has expressed their priority for the project. Um, and even in a recent public meeting, uh, 
city of Lowell expressed that it is a priority for the city. So um, when, when the project goes for evaluation to the PRC committee, that is project review committee, they will review each project that is listed in TIP and RTP, and they will ensure that the project that is of most priority for the region gets pushed to the front and slowly the other projects will be executed as well. So I hope Thank this you. gives you an idea of how the process works. It does, um, and, and I can take it up with the city as well, with the DPD. Um, sure. Just, just one comment on the MBTA uh, zoning requirement updates. Um, there, it involves all of the uh, MBTA stations, so it would also involve Bill Ricker and whoever else is in your, uh, your queue there. And um, it's, it's a planning question, so I was just curious as to um, whether there's been any awareness even uh, um, brought to bear in, in your travels on these issues environmentally. Absolutely, George, that's a really good question. So our housing team is uh, working closely with our municipalities on the MBTA communities legislation. And we're also in the process of developing our regional transportation plan. And we often um, collaborate with one another on the multidisciplinary planning. So looking at the impacts of housing in relation to environment and also transportation. So I think now we're doing a lot more holistic planning in rural and looking at our projects to understand the mitigation and also the impacts of the work that we do. So thank you for that. And I think um, with the projects that Shravanki mentioned, it's not too late to be involved. It sounds like they're um, in the really initial phases. So as the designs come forward, um, you'll have an opportunity to take a look at them and, and maybe recommend some of the features that they're looking for. Great, thank you. Thank you for joining. I also want to jump in and mention that we are, um, as an agency, working on the Lowell Housing Production Plan. Um, so that would be, it would be a great opportunity, George, to get involved in that. I know there's a public forum coming up for that um, on, I believe it's May, May 31st. Right. Yeah. yeah it's May at the 30th. Senior Center. Yes. Yeah, I'm on the, I'm on the uh, Housing Subcommittee. Uh, great. So we're really looking forward to that. Great, glad to hear. Um, yeah, we're all looking forward to that as well. Now I'll, I'll see you there. I'll be in attendance. Great, thank you. I have a question around trails. Um, George, are you all set? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I'm I'm wondering if NIMCOG has capacity in house to help with trail counts. Um. We have been have done some trail counts on the Concord River Greenway, and a few years ago, I worked with MAPC because of their work in with um, the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail and re their regional trail work. But we're outside their zone, um, mm -hmm. and they said they would take our data, but then it just goes into a black hole. Uh, so we were following their protocols and everything, and they seemed really excited about our data, but then no matter what I did was follow up, it never went anywhere. Um, so I'm, do you guys have any capacity to, to take data from trail counts? Or could you help connect me with somebody that could? Sure, I'm not sure that we've done trail counting in the past, but I'd be happy to um, follow up with you after the call to discuss how we can work together on that. Yeah, that would be great. Even if you could just help me get in touch with the person who does manage the data, because um, no, what I, no matter what I've done, I just haven't been able to get any response. And I've got a great crew of people that want to do another trail count. Yeah, absolutely. And um, a little backstory, I actually used to work in MAPC, so I have some contacts over there as well. So I'd, I'd love to help you. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you. And Jane, I just have a quick question. So um, a follow-up question, actually. So do you, did you mention like did you mention that you need assistance for trail counting or assistant getting the trail count data? I just want to make sure I understand that clearly. So I can do the count and get the data. I just want the data ana analyzed to get counts. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I don't have the capacity to do that because I, although I followed all the protocols I was given and have the data, I even have I still have the old data. It just never, it, like I said, it just went into a black hole. <laughs> mm, got it. Thank you. And, and they, the person I talked to at MAPC seemed genuinely excited to have our data, even though it was outside their area. Okay, awesome. We, we will definitely follow up on that. Okay, thank you. 
Do we have any other questions? Do you have any private historic homes on your, um, is that in your layer of historic resources or is it all public? That is a great question. Um, I will need to spend some time looking at, I think the data and the different categories um, to better understand how each resource is, is, is categorized, I guess. Yeah, for sure. No, it's just, there's a couple of, um, of private homes in Lowell that it would be great to have on the radar outside of the city of Lowell. Great. Yeah, I would, um, it would be great to, to have those identified and um, would be happy to follow up to, uh, to make sure that they're on our list or at least on our radar um, for that. Yeah, I would love that. Okay, great. Andrew has a hand up. Yeah, I'm a little bit lost here on how this plan relates to the long-term strategy for the state and uh, region. I know that uh, the state has very specific uh, climate and emissions goal, but I don't see how that translates down into the regional and uh, uh, climate goals. For example, I didn't hear the word uh, electrification, charging stations uh, mentioned in this uh, presentation at all. And in terms of transportation and housing, transportation has gotten to be a very large percentage of uh, the combined housing and transportation uh, budget, particularly in Billerica, where I live, where you see two, three uh, household uh, car household and a lack of uh, choice of uh, uh, being able to use transit. And I would think that to meet our climate goals, we really need to shift a bit and make sure that uh, better shared transportation is available and fewer single occupancy uh, transit. But I don't see that kind of thinking in your presentation as far as strategizing how we get to uh, 2050. So I can start and maybe Shavanti, you can jump in um, later. So the presentation that we gave today is an environmental consulting meeting. And as part of the meeting, we review the recommendations for our Envision 2050 plan and discuss the mit mitigation for the projects in the plan. So um, the reason why electrification did not come up is that there's no projects that are focused on electrification currently on the tip. Is that correct, Shamanti? Yes. Yeah, so we didn't, we weren't approached for, or um, there are no projects on the tip currently programmed through the year 2028 that are focused on electrification, whether it be of transit fleet or um, a municipal led project on electrification. So that's why it wasn't discussed as a mitigation. Yeah, just to clarify, uh, this the projects that were presented in the present, like mentioned in the presentation, are only the highway recommendations. Uh, the transit recommendations were not included as part of that, um, but there are certain projects that are related to electric fleet that uh, LRTA deals with. But today we just focused on this because this is more relevant to what we've been talking about in this meeting. If I may jump in as well, I think electrification efforts um, also tend to fall into this net zero planning umbrella. Um, so that's, though it's been informing the mitigation strategies for the RTP, um, it's something that's included in local net climate action plans. So that's also, I, we didn't mention that today. Mm -hmm. But rest assured, it is it is definitely a point of conversation across the region, something that our communities are very interested in and um, will be pursuing into the future. Yeah, more to come on that. And I'll also add, if you're joining the MPO meeting next week, we'll be talking a little bit about um, an electric, electric vehicle 
case study, and it actually is looking at electric vehicle amenities across our region. We're also looking at ownership of electric vehicles so that we can project and plan for the future. And that's sort of like, this will be sort of the initial effort, the first time that we've really looked um, deep into that information. So there'll be more to come on that. Thank you for the question, Andrew. I hope we were able to answer it. Are there any other questions from anyone else on the call? Okay, well, I don't see any other hands. Um, I'd just like to say thank you all for joining. And um, Siobhan, if you just shared our contact information, it's up on the screen right now. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our plan will be presented before the MPO next month. And there'll be a 21 day public comment period where you'll have an opportunity to directly comment on some of the recommendations made in this plan. We hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. And if there's anything at all, any questions that you think of after, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.